Towie and his wife, Ned Towie. She was sometimes called just Towie. The tomb is located at Dra Abel Ennaga and it's Theban tomb number 255. It's an 18th dynasty tomb, um, so you can imagine that there was a lot of uh, work smoothing down the walls before painting. And Roy was the royal scribe to Horemheb, who was the last king of the 18th dynasty. Remember Horemheb restored Amun-Ra at Karnak, uh, so you had Tutankhamun, who was succeeded by Ai, who was then succeeded by Horemheb. Roy was also the steward in the estate of Horemheb, so he oversees the king's personal estates. He had no children. This is a very small tomb for a royal official, and it has a very small entrance. And in many ways, after the tomb was robbed in antiquity, the shell must have covered the entrance and saved a lot of uh, uh, opportunities for occupation. Remember, after these uh, tombs were robbed uh, in ancient times and then again robbed in modern times in like the 18th and 19th century, people started moving into these places to use them as dwellings. Well, luckily, I think that uh, in Roy's case, the shale um, covered the entrance to his tomb and that saved any occupation. And the pictures are in pretty good condition, considering that they're 3,350 years old. If we have a look at the plan, number three is the burial shaft. So you've got the shaft that's going down, vertical shaft, into an underground chamber. And the chamber is there to take the coffins of the deceased, in this case, Roy and his wife, Towie. So we'll stick with the plan. At number two, You've got Roy and Towie receiving offerings and the mourners. So the funeral mourners are before them. Now have a look at the uh, upper register. There's Anubis. And underneath is what he's actually sitting on is a hieroglyph, which means mountain. Now, whenever you read the titles of Anubis, it always says Anubis who sits upon his mountain. There you go. So they tied that in really well. You can see the mourners in the funeral procession in the lower register. At number three, the priest liabates the offerings and purifies the offerings for the deceased. So empowering it to last forever. Remember, you're looking at magical pictures. The belief if you had these pictures with the magical writing, then it would last forever, it'd be eternal. And you're looking at pictures of Roy and his wife, not as physical human beings, but as spirits, as cars. Number four, you've got the weighing of the heart scene. Every Egyptian spirit had to go through those gateways into the underworld. And when they got out the other side, they had to have their heart weighed against the feather of the goddess Mart. And if your heart was heavier than the feather, then the monster Newt, which is there waiting, looking at the judgment, would then leap forward and gobble up your heart and your spirit would be destroyed forever. It was known as the second death. There is a female and male mourners. The girls are throwing dirt on their head. Okay, that's how they mourned. They, the earth went on the head because the earth comes from Geb and Geb is the primeval mound, the primeval mound of creation. By the act of putting earth on your head, you was actually saying rebirth, rebirth, rebirth. You can see Roy and his wife Towie before Nephitim, who has a lotus flower coming out of her head. Now the lotus flower represented birth. Uh, and it was a way of speaking to the gods. So what Egyptians used to do, rich ones, is they used to put a lotus flower in wine. And inside the flower was a, a, a really powerful uh, drug, similar, very similar to LSD. And after it had been soaking there for a while, you took it out and you drank the wine. And then they believed that you could speak to the gods. So Nephitim is the goddess of the lotus flower. 
Below her is the goddess Mart. It's her feather that goes on the scales that's weighed against your heart. So two very important deities. Now papyrus fragments were found in Roy's tomb um, after the robbers had robbed it. They left the papyrus fragments because probably as they were picking it up, it crumbled in their hands. And from those fragments, we know that on there was a spell coming forth by day spell to empower the spirit to leave the mummified body and the tomb during the hours of daytime. Wow. Anyway, it's a very small tomb. If you ever go to Luxor, uh, Egypt, then you must go and see the tomb of Roy and his wife, Taui. It's, it's amazing. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, press your subscribe button, thumbs up, take care, and see you soon. Bye for now.